Good morning, this is Bridget Murray doing watercolor with you again. Today we're going to do a watercolor technique using masking fluid as a resist technique and we're going to use a little light technique. So those are the colours I'm going to be using and I'll be mixing and showing you that later on. Okay, so to start with I'm going to make a border on this. Now if you have a frame at home that you want to use with the white, make it to fit, but really I'm making a small picture. I'm deliberately not making a big picture because the colours will be more concentrated, it'll be easier to do this picture at a smaller size and I don't normally do the border but I'm going to do it today and it's about five by seven so like a big photograph and what I do I take the masking tape off and then I put it on fabric or somewhere to double the stickiness of it because I'm sure you still remember we have uh, disasters where we end up tearing the paper so let me see here just try this you see, she don't get left off easy, but also do the border. And if you need to, you can always roll this up, but I'm just doing it roughly by any just. I have the base a little bit deeper there, 
and I've got that depth there and I'll make the sides the same as that area there. I find if I keep clicking the page around, I can see that I'm making it parallel to it. So there's roughly the, the areas I've messed off. And you can see the fabric where it's leaving that fur on, which will actually protect the paper a bit and not tear it up. So I'm drawing um, the outline of the trees, and I have put up in this wall here some photographs of trees over here. And if you notice the trees, um, some of them um, are in the snow, so they don't have that kind of roots like this one on there. And they go you know, straight up, they're probably a lines right here. A lot of people think trees go up like this properly. If you notice those trees, they're just parallel lines, almost. But I'm making mine a bit different because I'm um, angling them. So I'll show you here in this drawing I'm doing here. I'm going to even allow something to work down in the foreground. If I don't like something, it's going to be a masking tape, so I can then disregard it then. There's a real temptation when you're doing the tree to make it spread out, but make it just disappear. The tree is up here, it's really off the page. And I'm not making them perfectly straight, I'm making them have angles, and I'm making them recede with different sizes, you know, getting smaller in the background. There, I think I'll stop there. And the actual background has got a slope on it. There. You could draw in lines of branches, but I'm not going to bother. I will do that with the mask flute. Will I continue? Yep. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the mask and flute. If you wanted to, you could paint the background and then lift out the trees, which we've done before. And maybe I will lift out some trees just to show you that. I won't do all the trees in mask and fluid. So if anybody doesn't have this stuff at home, you could try it that way. Now this mask and fluid has got ammonia in it. And it just damages brushes. So I wouldn't put in a brush bigger than a size 6. And if you're clever with it, <coughs> it won't um, it won't be, you know, you can work with a brush. If I can get it open, it'll be great. These safety things are so safety. You might have to get it off that gun. Very good. So I'm going to use this small brush here. And what I do is I wet the brush and I impregnate the hair with a barrier, which is a soap, like this. And people think when they're using masking fluid, any old brush will do. But it's not a useful brush that gives you fine lines. It's no good. I have used a nib as well, but then I thought if I used a nib a day, we might not have one at home. So you impregnate the soap with soap, then you dip into this stuff, mask and fluid, which you hope you've shaken up, shook it up, or whatever, and then you can paint with it. And I'm roughly counting 10 seconds in my head, because what happens is you keep re-dipping, it gets thicker and thicker, and then it becomes not a very useful tool. So maybe that might be enough and I'll have to clean the brush again, soap it up and then dip. Because see if you continually dip and continually dip, it just gets thicker and thicker and it ceases to be useful. So there is, I'm painting some here, like that. And you could carry on doing that, but I have one I've prepared earlier and I'm going to work on that one. So we have the mask and fluid on the trees now and on the wee house in the background. And I'm using this glass water, but then I would disregard it because this is contaminated now with the mask and fluid. And uh, I'll leave this aside now and now we'll start thinking about painting the background. Now before I do the background, and there is one that I've done. See this background here? This is the kind of background we're looking to do. And I'm going to do a little rough of it, just to get the feel of it, really. And I'll just remind you again of these colours. We're using the yellow with a little bit of red, 
and we're using the blue and the red as well to get that lovely bamboo blue slate colour. There's another colour in the box that I've used, is, if you want to use it maybe, is Carmen. Carmen will give you a different, a different um, purple colour, it's more true purple, but this might be nicer for shadows. See that colour there? I'll do a little mock-up of this first. So I'll I'll turn it around to face me actually. And I'm just going to get the feel of it by doing this. And I'm going to dab the sky with this. Dab the sky with that there. And I'm going to use some of that yellow, starting at the horizon, and I'm going to work up very, very quickly. And while that's still wet, I'm going to use a bit of that orangey colour. Put that on. Just to put up the sky like that. And then immediately, I'm going to use the blue, the ultramarine blue, with a little of that cadmium red to give me that slip colour. And that's going to be trees, under trees, along the end bottom, away in the distance. I could tilt the paper a little bit to encourage that to run. See what it's doing there? And then at the base of it, that purpley shade, it could be the red and the blue. And I'm just going to do some rough marks like that. That's what I'm doing at the bottom. So that is what I'm going to try and do now on top of this one. This is a three part stage. We're going to wet the sky and put on the yellow. That's the first part. Then we're going to put on the orange, which you hope you'll have ready. And then you're going to put on these winter trees, which is the blue and the red. And it's a process that's done really quickly. And you want them to run like that there. And even as this develops, these trees will start to look wintry. So I will slow it down a wee bit by just doing the first bit of the sky. So I'm going to wet this. Now, I can feel right away the brush is hitting the resistance of the mask and glue. It's doing its job. And I'm going to do this process twice. I'm going to do it on the page I prepared where it didn't have all the mask included, so you can see how you'd, you'd lift it out. And there is the yellow there. I have a quite a wet brush for this. And I start there on the horizon. And you can see the bubbles right away. And I'm doing a broad stroke that goes right across the page. You notice I have done a lot of trees. The trees are resisted there, or the branches. Remember I said I didn't draw them in, but I put them in with the mask and blue. So there's the first colour, yellow, wet and wet. Now I'm going to mix that orange. There's the orange coming now. And I have it very strong just down there on the horizon, as if the sun has slightly sinking. It's that wonder sky when the sun doesn't really get up fully. When you're doing it too, be careful to go right across the page to the tip and I'm going to just have so many alternative strokes going up like that there and that's it. It's just fading up the page. Now there we've done two stages, two colours. You could do what I'm doing and have a good old fitter. But anyway, I'm going to do the next stage now which is the blue with the red and you get that bangle blue slate colour. And this time, if you notice now, when I'm going to use this, I'll just show you there my brush. It's not a wet brush this time at all. It's quite concentrated because I want there to be a reaction with the trees and not too wet. There. And there I start there and it start and will start to run. These are winter trees. If you notice too, I have a horizon drawn with the mask and blue, so I have an age there that's, that's going to be preserved. I get more blue in this just. 
and I've got a little cottage hiding down there as well. So that's that. Right, now we're going to do this bottle bit here. I'm not going to wet the bottle bit, I'm just going to use the purpley colour, the caramel in the middle of the blue, because I prefer this colour here. And I'm just going to scoop it into the page like that a little bit. Whatever you do, don't get rid of all the white. You know, I, I've done an age here and there, but I haven't actually got rid of the white. See, at this stage, if your paper is still damp, you might add some of that lovely mauve colour just to the top of the page here, because it's a nice colour. It might look like a winter sky coming down. Now here's the first page that I was working on, and if you remember, I only masked off, I only masked off a tree, a little bit of a tree there, because in this one I'm going to lift out these trees. This is in case you don't have masking through the book. And I do the same thing, I'm going to just wet the sky. So see there's a sky there. There's a an age that I won't go beyond. And I'm wetting the sky. Possibly should have used a bigger brush, but it's a workaround. So wet that. And you can see it's shining at the page. Then I use the yellow here. Starting down here, I will just go round. I've actually gone round that house if I haven't painted it on it and go up the page. Okay. And then I'm going to get some orange here. This is the orange sky, but if you notice, I am slightly avoiding the gable of that first to make it stand out a little bit. Because remember, I haven't used masking fluid on it. This is the orange set in sun. There. And I'm going to put on the caramel. There's the caramel there. I'll do this now because I think it's a lovely colour. That caramel is a nice colour to mix a little bit up here in the sky. Caramel with the blue. Just tr trickle it down there. And finally, I'm going to put in these trees at the bottom. If you go with the house, it doesn't matter because what we'll do is we will lift it out or use the magic gouache. So there I've got some winter trees away in the background. Like that. Now at this stage, before it dries, you could use the brush to lift it out. You see I'm using the brush to lift that colour out. You clean the brush and you lift it out. The kitchen roll. I've got the kitchen roll handy and I'm using the brush to lift it out. Trying not to go over the lines. There. You can lift it out like that or you can lift it out like this where you get the kitchen roll and you make a, a tool that will lift out the, the paint. So I'm lifting this out. Instead of massing it out, I am just lifting out that. You could even let it dry first. So lift, you can lift it out with a brush or a little bit of kitchen roll. So see I'm lifting out those dark areas there. So there I've left out some of the trees. Now some of the trees have picked up different colours, but they look very interesting, those barks. And when I work into them, they look really well. I'm just going to put some shadows again, just nearly a dry brush where you just flick it in. Don't have much on the brush, just a little bit. At the moment, I haven't even put on the shadows of the trees. I'm just putting a little bit of 
shadow around the edges of the page and just pull it up like that. here and I'm going to uh, paint, um, uh, just do a demonstration of trying out doing the trees. Now if you notice I'm just going up one side of the tree almost to the edge and there's different ways I could do this. This one here I'm just painting it under our paper. This. But you could do it but you do it different ways. Now I just did some marks there and I'm going to dry it with a wet brush which I dried off I am smudging it a little bit. See that? I am smudging where I just painted. This is where, where I have a bit better control instead of me just wetting the tree. So there I have wet a little bit. I've decided that I'm going to have the shadow on the left side of the tree because it's more convenient for me because I'm right handed. Do you notice that it's easier if you're right handed? To put the shadow to the left, otherwise you're working awkward to yourself. So the shadow will be to the left like that. There might be some little mark of that side there just to get the tree off. And this is how we're going to do the bark here. And you could smudge this as well with the kitchen roll just to make it look like it's got a nice white bark on it. The other way you could do it is you wet the tree trunk like that, you stamp it like that. And then you get your paint, which is extremely dry, really, so that you can just dab it along there, leaving unpainted bits to make it look like silver birch. And of course you'll have branches coming off this. Again, I'm using quite a dry brush. Let me let me have a great control of the fineness of the line. So we're going to do this on our perfectly dry paper at the moment after we've rubbed off any masking tape. perfectly dry. This is why I don't always use it in the class. It's because the time of getting everything done. And if you notice now taking off the masking glue, you roll it off. You know, some people try to take it off like this as if it was a, a face mask. You're better just to roll it with a clean dry finger. Just take this off quickly. And I've got these lovely winter trees that allow me to do this then on top of them. Now sometimes the paint has gone through the mask and glue as me and marks on the tree, but that's only interesting. Isn't it? Make sure you get it all off. Now, if some of the trays have all these marks, you could just smudge that away. I'm just going to smudge that away. These are just smudgy, smudgy things there. And I'm going to do the technique where I damp the tray. If you notice, I'm damping a tray, but not going quite to the edge. I've left a bit of a white edge there. Because that could be the snow has done that, has left the edges. And I'm doing little uh, marks across it like this. Because it's snow, it changes it. It doesn't have to be full down. And it's important to leave bits unpainted and to have that age on it. If you look at in the winter now, there's some gorgeous silver birch trees. And the, the barks have this light in them, so we don't want to get rid of all that there. 
some of them now I'm working just on dry. If you notice, see that I'm just working on dry. Maybe I might smudge it. And I will always keep some of that white that I've preserved. It could be snow on them, so I will keep it. So some of your branches are quite thick at the top. You could pretend that they were snow branches. So if you see these trees now, the ones in the foreground are right in the foreground and they're actually going into the picture. But it gives the picture some depth there that there is big trees in the foreground and small trees in the background. And if you think you're doing too much with it, the kitchen was a great smudger just to break up that regular, regular thing of the tree. I'm just putting on some quick shadows here. You can have more time. And there's trees that are off the picture that you can't see. There's one there that I'm lifting out actually. Uh, you could lift out trees in the background there so that they're... If you notice there, I'm lifting out some lines there. But all these trees, you can't really see their base. And right in the distance there is a little cottage that I'm going to lift out a little bit more. That's the walls of it. So there's something there in the background. I'm going to add more branches here, preserving the white at the top as if it's snow. And when I'm doing the trees and branches, I sometimes turn it upside, upside down and I'm working the paintbrush towards me, join it up to some tree just to make a whole network of loads of branches. So you're starting to get the feeling that there's a canopy up there. Don't get carried away like you know that within reason you could do. And sometimes I deliberately shake my hand like this so that it looks more interesting the branches. You can try that on again if it feels like. accessible to everybody. I'm going to just damp that tree a little bit and I'm going to do the exact same thing of painting the shadow on the uh, left side. If you're left-handed, do it on the right side. It's whatever's convenient really. But if you're deciding that the shadows are going to be on the right side, it's just a little bit awkward you'd be working that way. If you just uh, back here, you see what I'm doing here, I'm really colouring them in, that kind of smudgy brown. You could then just do this, is where you just lift out bits like that with your kitchen roll. This is on dry here. So I'm just painting that very roughly and I will smudge areas of it. Little dot and dash with a moss code, moss code. And here's a bigger tree here, now in the foreground. There. I'm just going to smudge that a little bit. Don't deliberate too much, you know, if you notice, I'm working quickly and lightly. And I can always do a little bit of smudging like that to make the tree look interesting. Now this, this picture now needs loads of branches on it. And again, <clears throat> if I turn the page upside down, I can just take them off the page. Crisscrossing a whole network. These are not your broccoli trees, these are trees that are linear 
and they go off the page and the canopy is right up beyond your eye level. See if you notice I'm going onto the mask on tip. Let me have a look at this as it is. Yeah, it might have some little branches that are wandering across the page onto a tree there. So we're almost finished this one. And in the distance, there's the, the impression maybe of a cottage or something there in the distance. Your eye will believe it's a cottage. Hopefully. You know, it's put in some shadow. This is all dry. And we established that the shadow is more to the left. So I'm going to put some shadows down the side. Not a solid line, just some shadow down the tree. Like this. And I might even put lines across the tree as if it's been interrupted by. See, I've just done interrupted lines there. It's not just one straight line, I'm doing. Uh, as if it's just been interrupted, that's the word. It's a shadow that's been interrupted a little bit. And then the shadow is going to go this way. It's going to go to the left. So be very tentative about how you put the shadow on. Um, if the tree is very narrow, the shadow is going to be very narrow. So I'm putting very delicate little lines like this and the meander across there like that now there's bits there where we can't see the tree but I believe it's there there's trees that are far eyes shut so we just do and there could be some branches and things in that as well don't do too much get carried away with the shell there so these wee branches just need to be finished off And the final thing I'm going to do is put in a splatter of snow. And uh, it also could have, I'll let this one dry in a moment, but I'm going to get a, a bit of orange, you know, the, the, this colour here. And I'm going to just put in an old dash of random leaves that could be still clinging to the tree. Just um, little spots of it. I got a brush. I might block that but it's getting carried away there. So I might leave that for a moment just to dry so then I can splatter it finally. You know, you might feel like putting in stronger tones in those trees where I would, but uh, I'm going to leave it for now so we can have it done at any time. And I've got a toothbrush here and I put it on as if I'm putting on toothpaste really. And try it somewhere first to make sure you've got the exact kind of splatter. I just like that little, not everywhere. I'm only doing it around the edges, the top, like that. Oh, I've got a really big splot. Just that you don't want to have it. Smudge it a Uh, that's not a happy accident, <laughs> but I'll just fix it. Yeah. I'm going to take the tape off here, and we're hoping that it hasn't been too sticky the tape to cause too much damage. And when I'm taking it off, I keep the tape, keep my hand close to the paper. Like this, and peel it off gently. It's, it is a bit sticky. It's gone over the edge there, as you can see. But I'm trying to clean that up. It's better not to try and rip it off like a bandage because you, you could take it off and save it. So if you notice I'm trying both ends, and that is a bit sticky, that. Yeah. It's not too bad that 
And I would just try to mix this all quite different in the colours. This is quite more, this subtler, and it's the exact same palette. And if you remember, uh, I prepared that by putting it on my on the fabric of my trousers, and this one is actually coming off much easier. That was prepared two days ago, so maybe it is glued to the paper quicker as this was done more recently. There you go. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope that you'll be able to enjoy doing this this day, and that I'll see you another day. Hope you're all keeping very well and all my best.